I know this is gonna be by far the most challenging thing that we've done. Well, you know it's not gonna kill you. It's not gonna do any permanent damage. <sighs> Could it do permanent damage? Women are biohackers by nature. We're Lauren and Katie. We're taking a look at the wildest health hacks, wellness treatments, and the most cutting edge biotechnologies. We're taking you inside and unlocking the secrets only women could. This is Biohackers. Water fasting involves abstaining from food for 72 hours so that your cells can experience autophagy. Though controversial, this practice is experiencing a rise in popularity with many medical professionals coming out to confirm its many benefits. Dr. Mindy is the leading voice in the water fasting movement and flew down to coach us safely through our fast. But will our bodies be on board for this biohack? You gotta get your mind and really your heart as well in alignment with an experience like this. What do you do when the mind tells you this is dangerous? All the mental hurdles that come up. A uh, water fast is basically just what it sounds like. You only drink water. So if it's three days, it's just 72 hours of only drinking water or no food. So we eat whole foods without any food and only $100 worth of water. <laughs> yeah. What we have here is what Dr. Mindy said that we should have for our last meal. Are you nervous? I have been in my head going back and forth of just not doing it, like pretty much putting my foot down and being like, I intuitively know this is not good for me. Yeah. But I also feel like I need to give it a chance. And I know this is gonna be by far the most challenging thing that we've done for me. Well, I'm proud of you. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to starting our three day fast. Yay, last meal. I definitely felt like my blood sugar levels were gonna be off and I was gonna be miserable the whole time and that maybe it would mess with my menstrual cycle. I do so much in my life now to like balance and calm and relax and not put my body into a cortisol state. I try to find every excuse in the book to not do it. I was worried that I'd be really irritable when we were trying to film and sometimes you don't feel like talking to anybody, you wanna be by yourself. So I was worried about having to be social while I was fasting. Your sadness about this fast is like seeping through you. <laughs> it's 13 hours fasted, this is intermittent fasting. Inflammation comes down, glucose comes down, insulin comes down, growth hormone goes up. So we just woke up. Um, it's the first day of fasting. I feel like I have a slight headache and I just don't really feel like doing much. What about you? Yeah, I just feel um, not motivated, not happy <laughs> and uninspired. I just keep cycling through my head like three more days. I think today I just wanna literally lay on the beach and read a book. That would be like the best thing to do. We wanted to make sure they had a glucose monitor. Numbers are so telling. I get people all the time that want to do a longer fast and they don't want to measure their numbers and I think that's where fasting goes wrong. Everything's a little more complicated when you're fasting. Whoa. What? It says you're at a, oh no, that's the countdown. <laughs> it said one. It said, <laughs> I was like, no wonder you don't feel good. <laughs> We just did our glucose levels and I got an 88. And I have a 78, which we're both in good range. The best thing to do when fasting is find time to just like go inward and relax, do some breath work, meditation, yoga, just like all things that make you feel good. And like releasing those like happy chemicals without, you know, food doing that. At 24 hours, the whole microbiome of the gut will reset. Old bacteria that's no longer serving you will slough off. The body will repair leaky gut. When day one started, I felt slightly irritable, but then I definitely took a turn when we started driving. I immediately felt nauseous. It was an awful feeling. Katie was struggling. She could not get grounded and she felt very sick. <laughs> My first thought is, oh, Katie needs to work on her gut. And there's something going on in the gut. And sure enough, when I got here today, Katie said she had been on vacation with family, eating the wrong things. What the gut did in the fasted state is it started to repair itself. And when it repaired itself, it took the mucus and anything else in the gut, and it was like, well, let me get it out. Proceed to the roof. Sorry, girl, today. Okay. Want some water? Stop
At 48 hours, the body starts burning fat at a faster rate because it's needing fuel. And you actually start to create new dopamine receptor sites, which means after they reintroduce food, that whole system becomes refined and reset. So this is day two of our water fast. I think it's been going pretty good so far, minus... For you, it's been going good for you. You were the one who was the most worried and I was all relaxed. And then it was like, oh my gosh, the wrath but I'm hanging in there. And how are you feeling now? I feel um, definitely better than yesterday, but I think, you know, I'm just having a lot of sensitivity on this particular water fast for mm -hmm. whatever reason. I think we're both really excited to talk to Mindy today and just pick her brain. We're really going through, you know, how they're feeling, what their numbers mean. You know, there's a moment at which the fast is mentally challenging. I can't do this shows up, or I don't want to do this, or I'm agitated or angry. It's day two. This is a really tough day. Mm -hmm. This is the hardest day. I actually feel surprisingly much better than um, I expected to feel. I definitely have symptoms of fasting where I have moments of headaches. Mm -hmm. There are moments when I feel pretty like, you know, just tired and want to lay down. And Do you feel calmer? I do feel calmer. It's weird, you go from like an anxious state yeah. and then you go into a place of like, whew, like, oh, like I'm okay. Okay, Katie, how are you doing? Well, I'm not gonna lie, yesterday was really rough. So feeling a lot better today, like little moments of nausea, but mm -hmm. I, I am feeling that calm feeling that you described, yeah. so. When you said you were gonna throw up, I was like, go for it, it's awesome, like do it. Because you're getting the old out. Wow. And then literally a new microbiome is gonna come in. Mm -hmm. So when you go through a fast like this, you're literally creating an environment where now we can throw in some food and things are going to finally repair in three days. Perfect. It's so cool. So all yeah. that pain was worth Yes, it. exactly. Maybe I should have told you. All right. You. Maybe you I were, should have told you that. You were just that. catapulting yourself <laughs> forward so yeah, that you could like... get all the benefits. Okay, this is the best part. We're gonna check your numbers. You guys remember how to use these? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're not pros yet. A good fasting glucose is around 70 to 90. So I got a 90. Okay. So when I first saw that with Katie, what it told me is Katie's been doing something leading up to this fast that may have been more toxic as far as her diet. So mine's 71 and uh, last yesterday's was around 78. 70 is really healthy blood sugar. So what I sense from Lauren's readings this morning is that she's in a sweet spot of fasting right now. Let's. Look at ketones. Ketones are magical. This is why everybody's chasing ketones. You can only get them by moving from a sugar burner state to a fat burner state. Ketones were primitively made in our bodies because in the caveman days, if we didn't have food, what the body did is create this alternate fuel source to make us mentally sharper, to give us energy, to kill hunger, to calm us so we could go find food. When you've got 2.5 and even at 1.3, ketones are going into action doing the healing and this intelligence inside your body is like figuring it out and all you have to do is sit back and enjoy the ride. Dr. Mindy showed us how to break the fast. So she recommended different types of foods like bone broth, blueberries, probiotic yogurt, and then how we should break the fast in terms of what order we ate what. So the research on yerba mate is really interesting. It shows that it really kills hunger and it doesn't elevate the blood, your blood sugar. Yay. This is like such a treat. Oh my God, see the dopamine's already kicking in. You're, you're like, Thank you. this is amazing. Your well, when you first pulled it out, I was like, I hope she's gonna open that up and give it to us. <laughs> Your matzo's never tasted so good. 72 hours, old white blood cells will be sloughed off. New ones will emerge. Senescent cells, which are aging cells, completely disappear. And new stem cells come in. And stem cells will go to any injured body part and we'll start to repair those injured body parts. It is truly the greatest neurochemical reaction that could happen in the body without doing anything. That's the chemistry that's happening and has happened to them over the last three days. On day three of the fast, Dr. Mindy took us to the beach and showed us some awesome tools to help you through a water fast. One was a visual technique of scanning the horizon, and that helps put your body into a relaxed mode. She showed us a tapping exercise as well that helps with relaxation. And then you're exhaling out through your mouth for a count of eight. One, two, 
Day three felt really pretty peaceful. I was really feeling the benefits of the fast in terms of the mental clarity and the optimism. With ketosis, I would definitely say that that wave was like more on the consistent high by like day two, day three. If I really wanted to push myself, I could have kept going for the mood benefits, but I did feel slightly weak. The only thing that was not relaxing on day three is I had to fly back to Miami. That was the only time that I noticed that my glucose level kind of dropped below the 60 level. 56 for the blood glucose and 2.7 for the ketosis. I did not feel good after the flight. And by that time I could break my fast in like an hour and a half and I was very much ready to do so. I'm at the airport, day three, final hours of this water fast. And I'm finding it really difficult to be around all the smells from the restaurants. It's really hard. It felt really good to, to break the fast at the end of the day with bone broth. I'm officially breaking the fast with some delicious bone broth, as Dr. Mindy recommended. After three days of not eating, it tastes so good. After I broke the fast, I felt amazing. I was really happy that I had the knowledge of how to break the fast and what foods to eat because I felt like I eased into eating again in like a really nice, graceful way. And I felt like I had more energy for a couple weeks and it's definitely something that I'll keep doing in the future. I noticed afterwards there was like a little bit of a spiritual shift, I would say. I also became a preacher of fasting, which is kind of interesting. There was like this shift back into like who I am truly. And like, I did feel more connected to myself and what myself wanted and when I wanted to work out and when I didn't. I kind of feel like there was a little bit of a reset there. If you want to see how you use food to change your mood, you'll get that in a three-day water fast. Like Katie, we saw Katie's got some gut stuff she needs to work on. Literally, it's like taking a mirror to your body and your mind and your spirit, and it reflects it back to you, and you get to choose what you want to do with it. Sometimes you might not like what you see, but if you're tuned in, you'll see what a gift it can be.